healing. Jesus worked a lot of miracles of healing in the Gospels. Healing of body, of mind, of spirit. Some of those miracles were spectacular. Like Lazarus, who had been in the tomb dead for three days. And Jesus says at the tomb, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus does, fully alive. Some of the miracles that Jesus performed of healing were very subtle, without any fanfare, like, your sins are forgiven. But oftentimes, these very apparently calm miracles were among the most significant. There were miracles where Jesus showed a special sensitivity to other people in their healing. Like today's gospel, a man had been deaf from birth, and because he couldn't hear, he couldn't speak plainly. And the gospel says that a crowd brought this man to Jesus for healing. But notice that Jesus didn't do it right there. He was sensitive to that man's needs. He took that man who couldn't hear and couldn't speak plainly off by himself, the gospel says, so that he could concentrate, so that he could understand what Jesus was going to do. And Jesus took his time. Jesus took his own hands, and he touched the deaf man's ears to let him know that he was going to heal. And Jesus took his finger and touched the man's tongue to let him know he was going to heal his speech as well. And then Jesus looked up to heaven and groaned. He wanted the man to know that this was a divine miracle that was going to take place. And then Jesus said, Ephata, be opened. And immediately the man could hear and he could speak plainly. Healing, miracles of healing. We all long for them. But the truth is, the healing of Jesus continues in our world. His healing hand continues through our hands as we become agents of his healing not always in spectacular ways, but most often in very small ways, but healing nonetheless. The times that we help somebody carry a burden or we share in their sorrow or we offer them a word of encouragement or comfort or we reach out and try to heal a hurting heart. This is Jesus and his healing power working through us. Every single one of us here today participates in the healing ministry of Jesus. We become his hands in our world. I'll share three small stories with you today. They're stories of healing. They're stories of Jesus working through other people. And they're stories that I hope that you can connect with and see the opportunities that the Lord has given to you to be his hands of healing in our world. The first is about a man named John. He was a husband, and like a lot of men, 
John found it very, very difficult to show emotion. He was very guarded in his words. And one night, his wife became very ill. She went to the hospital with John. She had to undergo emergency surgery. And as she was in the recovery room, she wasn't making the progress that the doctor expected. The doctor observed her. All the medical parts seemed to be in place, but she seemed to be deteriorating. And the doctor concluded that the reason was she just didn't want to. And so he asked her, don't you want to get better for John? And she answered, John is strong. He doesn't need me. The doctor called John aside and told him what had happened. John went to his wife's bedside and said, Honey, you've got to try to get better. Without opening her eyes, she said, Why? And he responded, Honey, because I need you. And she opened her eyes and she said to John, this is the first time in our marriage that you have ever told me that you needed me. The nurse noticed that her pulse rate immediately was going up. Two weeks later, she was back home recovering well with the assistance of her husband, John. The doctor reflected that all the medical procedures were in order, but she had to choose between life and death. And that the words of her husband, I need you, were exactly what she needed to get better, to know that she was needed, that she was loved. And although that husband didn't say, arise and walk, like Jesus did in the Gospels, his words, through the power of God, had that same effect. She arose, and she went home to recover because of the power of that word from her, her husband, I need you. It was a miracle of healing. It was a miracle of grace. The second story is about a baseball manager who'd been a player for years. He was going into the stadium through the player's entrance when he heard his name called. And he turned, and there was a middle-aged man, and he assumed that he wanted an autograph. But that isn't why he called his name. He said, about 20 years ago, my parents arranged for you to meet with me because I was all set to quit school and become a baseball player. And you met with me and encouraged me to stick with school and that baseball may come later. He said, I heard what you said. I took it to heart. And today, I'm an attorney. And I came back to thank you.